Hello and welcome to this short video uh, which is going to cover the assessments that you're going to be asked to, to complete during your uh, entrance testing day. Now I'd like to introduce Mr Andrew Dobson, our Head of English, who's going to speak briefly uh, about the English assessment. Good afternoon, my name is Andrew Dobson, I'm the Head of English at Exeter School and I'm going to talk to you briefly about the uh, entrance examinations 11 plus, 12 plus, 13 plus and 14 plus and what that involves. So essentially what are we assessing? Uh, broadly speaking we're assessing reading and writing and so each examination paper will contain a reading passage and we're assessing skills such as reading for gist, uh, looking for detail, uh, giving us a sense also of what a writer's doing, the sense of a writer making conscious choices to create, for example, ideas about characters or ideas about atmosphere. As we go up the age range, we expect more. So for example, when you're looking at 14 plus entries, you can probably expect to get a fairly literary uh, piece of writing. And we would at that level be expecting candidates to be able to talk about what you might describe as the writer's craft and how that works. We don't assess content uh, when we uh, assess for reading. So for example, we're not going to ask you to find a simile or personification or whatever. Um, but by all means, if, if candidates find it useful to talk about literary features in a way that shows an understanding of the text, then we would of course um, encourage that. What I would not encourage is what's often referred to as feature spotting and so that sense of they're not really reading the text, they're just sort of looking for perhaps things they've been pre-taught to look for, things like similes or metaphors or whatever. Um, what we're interested in very fundamentally is how well candidates can read and what they can tell us about the text that they have read. Um, we're also assessing writing, of course, um, and essentially we don't prescribe uh, a list of text types, but we're not going to ask pupils to, or rather candidates, to uh, write anything that we don't think they can write. Um, I mean, examples of the things we would look to ask candidates to write would be obviously creative writing or speeches, that kind of thing, letters. And we're looking for accurate writing, we are looking for descriptive, evocative writing and uh, again as you go up the age ranges I think our expectations quite understandably are going to raise there or be risen there uh, and so for example at 14 plus we would certainly be looking for that sense of purpose and audience, the idea that we have a writer who is writing for a purpose to someone even if ultimately that person is a group of English teachers in a room marking entrance examinations. Um, I'll talk about spelling briefly. Um, spelling is assessed, um, but what I would say quite strongly is if candidates know a, a really good word but they're unsure as to how to spell it, they should still go for that word because the fact that they can't spell it is one thing, but the fact that they evidence knowledge of a, of a good adventurous word in terms of their writing is something that obviously uh, is in their favour and is something that we would um, be, be we would like to see there. Um, finally uh, really just to talk briefly about handwriting um, we don't assess formally for handwriting um, but obviously if candidates are uh, uh, writing in, in a way that's not legible that is going to impact on their marks and actually another thing I would say very briefly just based on my experience of setting and marking these exams for a number of years now in the writing section please write more than one paragraph it's very difficult to award marks if a candidate only writes one paragraph and we do specifically say in the examination that candidates should write more than one paragraph. Paragraphing is evidence of the ability to structure and organise a narrative or a letter or whatever it happens to be and if it's not there it's, it, it can be quite problematic actually. Um, hopefully that gives you a flavour of um, where we're coming from when we uh, set the entrance examinations. However I have written some fairly 
detailed guides for parents and candidates and so I would very much encourage you to look at those. They do sort of give you uh, examples of questions and examples of the sorts of things we ask and so that should provide you with um, more resources in advance of the entrance examination process. Thank you. Um, I am the Head of English, it's been good to talk to you and uh, the best of luck. And now we're going to hear from uh, Mrs Emma Cartwright, our Head of Mathematics, who's going to talk a bit about our maths assessment. Hello, my name is Mrs Emma Cartwright and I'm Head of Maths here at Exeter School. I'm going to be talking to you about the maths entrance test that you'll be sitting in January. Now firstly, we don't want you to feel nervous about this test. The questions in the test will only be of the same sort of questions as you will see in the practice test that looks like this. The questions are on the left hand side, there is space in the middle for you to do all of your working and the answers go on the right hand side here. If you haven't yet seen a paper like this, you can find sample papers on our website or please ask our admissions department. Working through these questions is the best way to prepare for the test. Um, now we ask you to take this test just so that we can make sure that you'll be okay when you get here. Even if maths is not your strongest point, you might be really good at something else like English or a great musician or a sports person. The head will look at the whole person, so it's not a disaster if there is an area that you're not quite as good at. Um, let's have a look at a typical maths problem, and this is quite a wordy problem, so there will be lots of, um, lots of simpler questions on the test, but this one um, is about uh, somebody who's drawing a plan of their house, and it says that Anna is drawing a plan of her house. She starts with a rectangle, which is twice as long as it is wide. The perimeter of the rectangle is 48 centimetres and we were asked to find the length of the longest side of the rectangle that Anna has drawn. Now with any sort of problem solving question like this, a diagram can be a really helpful starting point. So I'm going to draw a quick picture of our rectangle, just a rough one. Okay, now we know, don't we, that our rectangle is twice as long as it is wide. So I'm going to use a little bit of algebra to help me to solve this. So if I call the shortest side x and the longest side is double that, then the longest side would be 2x. Because it's a rectangle, this side here will also be x and this side will also be 2x. Now what I'm told in the question is that the perimeter, which means the distance all the way around this shape, is 48. So I'm going to count up and see how many x's I've got in total. I've got 1x plus 2x's, so that's 3x, plus another one, which makes 4, plus 2 more, so I've got 6x. So in total, 6 lots of x is going to be equal to that perimeter of 48. So perhaps you can think about how I would now work out what x is. Okay, and to work out our value of x then, well, we know that 6 multiplied by x gives us 48. So what we need to do is divide um, by 6 to figure out what x must be. So if we divide by 6, 48 divided by 6 gives us an answer of 8. So we now know that x is 8. Um, but we want the length of the longest side, and x is the shortest side. Um, so we now need to multiply that value of, of x by 2. So we do 2 times 8, and that gives us our answer of 16 centimetres. Thank you for listening, and good luck with your entrance test. And now we're going to hear from Mr Richard Tier, our Director of Science, who's going to speak briefly about the science assessment. Hello, I'm Richard Tier, and I'm Director of Science at Exeter School. I'm here to talk to you about the science paper. It's an hour-long test made up of three 20-minute sections, one for each science, biology, chemistry and physics. We realise you all have different experiences of science, so we try to keep the questions as general as possible and most can be done with careful reading and a little bit of general knowledge. Um, we try to match the guidelines of what the nat national curriculum expects from you and we've looked at what local schools study and also looked at what pupils of, at Exeter School might be studying at the same age. Um, our general advice to you is to read the, question, sorry, read the questions carefully, to make a note on the page if you've not studied uh, a particular topic and just to really have a go. Um, all there is now is to say good luck, all the, all the best for next year, have a great Christmas and we look forward to uh, seeing you again in, the, in January.
Uh, this very brief video is going to cover the basics of the computer-based test that forms part of our 11+, plus, 12+, plus, 13+, plus, and 14+, plus entrance assessments, that is, for entry into years 7, 8, 9, and 10 at Exeter School. A significant aim of this video is to reassure you about the test itself and the fact that you cannot do any subject-specific preparation for it. Uh, on your entrance testing day, you will sit at a computer and the programme will ask you to answer questions that are either based on verbal reasoning, that's related to words and sentences, non-verbal reasoning, related to other skills such as pattern matching, and finally some mathematical reasoning. These sections on verbal, non-verbal and mathematical skills assess important foundations that lead to further learning. For a very small number of candidates, uh, you might have already set a test very similar to this one at another school already, but before sitting it as part of the assessment that day at Exeter School. I just want to reassure you, if you realise this when you are starting the assessment, uh, then, then please don't worry, uh, you don't need to tell anyone, just carry out the test uh, as normal and do the best that you can. The whole thing is split into sections uh, and takes just under an hour to complete. There are some very clear instructions that go along with each section and also some example questions at the start uh, of each separate section. And these are designed to prevent any undue stress to help make sure that you understand what you're being asked to do. For some questions, there are multiple choice answers where you select one answer. In others, you're asked to drag and drop the right answer into the correct place. In some other questions, you need to complete a blank space with the correct word. So in terms of, of what content you might be asked, this is the same as required for the written English and maths papers. Importantly, uh, this, this innovative test is designed to provide a reliable, fair and comprehensive assessment and is designed also to, to be taken without any prior practice to enable you to demonstrate your academic potential and ability without the need for coaching and excessive preparation. The assessments support developed abilities in reading and maths that rely on a genuine understanding rather than learning through repetition. Hi, my name's Sophie. Hi, my name's Dan. And we sat the entrance exam for Exeter School in January. Hi, I'm Maddie and I sat the entrance exam in January. I found the entrance assessment easier than I thought it was going to be and a lot less stressful. Uh, I found the entrance assessment uh, it was it was quite hard, but if you revised or prepared the topics that you weren't quite sure on, yeah, you should be fine with it. Uh, I found the ass entrance assessment, I thought it was going to be much harder than, I th than it actually was. Because I get quite worried about exams, so I'd been doing a bunch of preparing, I was very <laughs> worried that I wasn't going to get through, but it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, so my school prepared me quite well, but we also did quite a bit of work um, at home, but it was just revising everything that we've already done in school or things that Exeter had provided us with. Uh, so I did some revision at home on the topics that I wasn't quite sure with, so then you were secure with those. I found the English quite good in a way because you got to write your own story, so it was a really good chance for you to just show off, and that's the same with all, the, all of the exams. It's just a chance for you to show your like what you have and your um, talents and, and yeah so I found I found the English good because it was a way to just show what I can do. I actually in my English exam I actually messed up completely. I was writing the story and I realized that I had been writing from the wrong wrong prompt the entire time. I'd spent a bunch of time in it then I had to restart everything. But even though that went completely wrong, I still managed to get in with an exhibition, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed in English because it's uh, you can uh, explore your creative writing and imagination. And with the maths, I, I, I found maths quite hard, but if you revise the topics that you weren't sure on, then you should be fine with it. Um, I found I was really panicked about the maths because it's not one of my strongest points, but it really wasn't that bad and it you just need to read over the question really carefully and just break down the question um, and if you don't understand it just move on and just make sure you get to the end of the paper. The maths, um, I'm not that good at maths, I, I wouldn't say that it's my best subject and, but the maths paper, it had so much stuff that we'd learned and stuff that we'd covered and everything so it was actually very helpful because I was like oh I know how to do this, which was surprising. 
Uh, I think there were three science papers, physics, chemistry and biology. Uh, and I found the biology, I, I really like biology, and that was good. Um, I found the physics quite hard because there's lots of different calculations and to remember. Um, but if you revise all of the topics and uh, read the question carefully, then you should be good with it. I found the science quite hard because uh, science is all about knowing something, but it was it's really nothing to worry about because if you know if you know what you've learnt, then you'll be absolutely fine and just again read the question really carefully. The staff were actually really helpful when I came to the exam day. They showed everyone where they were sitting, they made sure that everyone had the right equipment. Um, also, the, the cafeteria staff were really nice. They gave us good foods. I found the teaching staff so lovely. They were making sure that we were provided with drinks and food and that we were able to use you know, the facilities here and uh, that we weren't stressed or panicked on, or anything before the exam. I found them really helpful and supportive. They showed you where everything was and they showed you where you were sitting the exam and what to do and which papers were first so and they were really supportive and kind. Uh, my top tip would just be to don't don't get worked up about it don't stress about it it's um, just read make sure that you read through the questions in the paper really carefully and that you try to answer every question and just have confidence in yourself because that's how you can be sure that um, you just believe in yourself more. Uh, my top tip would probably be uh, just don't panic, just read the question and do your best. My top tip would just be don't get too stressed. I built up a bunch of stress and worry. All the, well, not exactly nothing because it is important, but nothing extremely bad happened. Everything went fine. I'd just gone over the top of it. So, so my tip would just be, try not to get too stressed. It's going to be okay. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. So I hope that this short summary helps to give you a sense of what the day will be like, help put your mind at ease about what to expect. All we want is for you to be able to do the best that you can on the day itself. If you have any further questions about this or any other aspect of our entrance testing, then please do get in contact with our admissions team. Thank you for watching.